Hi everybody, it's Tom Woods, October 23rd, 2012. I made the brief video that follows for an event that's taking place later this week, October 25th, in Naples, Italy, marking the translation of my book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to American History, into Italian. Uh, the Italian version of the video will have Italian subtitles in it, and incidentally, if you happen to be in Naples, if you look at the description of this video on YouTube, you'll find a link that will take you to some information about the event. But I thought to myself, I have a YouTube channel, and, well, I'll put the, might as well put this video up there in case there's anybody else who doesn't happen to be in Naples who might find it interesting. Also, please stay tuned all the way to the end, because at the end I'll have a list of some of my upcoming events uh, in the very near future, and I hope some of you will be able to join me for one of those. Thanks for listening. Hello, this is Tom Woods, author of The Politically Incorrect Guide to American History, and I'm very happy to welcome you to this wonderful event marking the translation of my book into Italian. This is, I think, something like the 20th foreign language translation I've had of my various titles. I'm very pleased about that. I'm not so happy that I'm unable to be with you tonight, although I'm glad to be able to speak to you via this recorded message. Uh, on the other hand, as a matter of fact, the last time I was in Italy was for a panel discussion among some academics regarding the translation of two of my other books into Italian. But all the same, I'd like to thank Marco Respinti, the translator, and everybody who was involved in the translation and in putting on this event for making all of this possible. Now, in a nutshell, I wrote the Politically Incorrect Guide to American History in 2004, and this book gives you an overview of U.S. history that is quite different from what you'll find in any American history textbook on the market in the United States today. Because it's written by somebody, namely me, who favors the free market economy, is suspicious of and opposes centralization of power, is suspicious of and skeptical of government war propaganda, and is inclined to evaluate the presidents of the United States, not according to whether they got the United States into war and whether they engaged in large-scale domestic policy-making and reconstruction, uh, but rather whether they avoided these things. Typically, if you look at the surveys of U.S. historians regarding who are considered to be the greatest president, it's always the war makers, and it's always the new dealers, it's always the interventionists. It's never the relative handful of presidents who confine themselves to humbly executing the laws, as understood in the Constitution. But that's the benchmark that I use in the Politically Incorrect Guide. Now, what's, I think, revealing about this book is not just the content, which gives you, as I say, a rather a, a different view of American history, but also the reaction to the book and what that tells us about American political life. When the book came out, not surprisingly, it was attacked by the New York Times very harshly on the editorial page. Ha! Ah, not even in the book review section, but so dangerous is this book and the truths contained within it that it had to be condemned on the editorial page. But what's also interesting is that the neoconservatives, the fake conservatives in the United States, who unfortunately are pretty much everybody uh, right of center these days, uh, they also attacked the book, some of them, and they attacked it for the same reasons the New York Times attacked it. So it just goes to show how phony the neoconservatives are. When push comes to shove, when the chips are down, they're no different from the New York Times. They're also against decentralization. They, they too favor war propaganda. Remember the New York Times was responsible for a great deal of war propaganda leading up to the Iraq War, a propaganda we would laugh at today, although of course the human toll that it took was no laughing matter. And so on and on, all down the line of my, my offenses. I loved the New York Times attack on me. It didn't ever say where I was wrong. It just simply said, how dare this guy say this? How dare he say that? Well, as a matter of fact, I did say those things, and I can prove them. I put up a little page on my website, tomwoods.com, that uh, gives a little bit more information about the book and also links you to my replies to these critics, and you might get a kick out of that. That's at tomwoods.com slash pig. Pig, of course, stands for politically incorrect guide. So check out tomwoods.com slash pig. I hope you enjoy the book. Thanks very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you, and have a wonderful night.